This is the Mark 43. This is the Mark 57. Two of the tactical nuclear weapons in our arsenal that deter the enemy from making an overt act. Prescribed security and safety requirements are followed to ensure the proper handling of these weapons. This film will show you the shipboard part of the stockpile to target sequence, from taking weapons aboard through stowing them below and bringing them topside to aircraft loading. Weapons may be received aboard at dockside, by replenishment at sea, or from a barge while at anchorage. Nuclear weapons are received aboard by the Special Weapons Division, commonly referred to as the W Division personnel. Immediately upon receipt, a tech monitor makes a preliminary inspection. The armed guard maintains security. After inspection, the handling crew starts the weapon on its journey from the deck edge elevator. They move it across the hangar deck. and roll it onto the upper stage SAS elevator platform. Two diagonal casters are rotated 90 degrees and locked, preventing movement of the container on the platform. The elevator operator notifies the transfer passage handling crew that a weapon is on its way. The weapon is met at the transfer passage by a handling crew marine guards and firefighters. The handling crew transfers the weapon from the upper stage elevator to the lower stage elevator. Note security and safety precautions taken to assure against an incident with a nuclear weapon. They make sure that neither end of the weapon extends over the edge of the platform. Again, the container is secured against movement on the elevator platform. The lower stage elevator is manually controlled. The second man you see on the elevator is for compliance with the two-man rule. This elevator takes a weapon to its assigned magazine. The transfer passage hatch cover is closed, as no two accesses to an elevator trunk are allowed open at the same time. Upon arrival at the assigned magazine, the weapon is rolled into the magazine handling area.
It is raised by the overhead handling system. And the quick, releasable casters are removed. The weapon and the container, which now serves as a high shock stowage chock, are transferred to their stowage position. The container is centered in its pre-selected stowage position by guide pins inserted in the universal deck drilling pattern. and the container is bolted to the deck. The tech monitor makes his receipt inspection and signs the official receipt for the weapon. Here the weapons remain intact, as stowed, except for periodic monitoring and testing in accordance with appropriate instructions. Upon completion of loadout of weapons, this ship then becomes a member of the active fleet. A nuclear strike plan has been received in the Weapons Coordination Center or the Strike Control Center. Right. Do we have any of the 43 or the Mark 57s in this uh, group? Yes, sir. Three 43s and two Mark 57s. All right, let me check the flight deck squad. Personnel here, flight in turn, control, initiate the execution of the plan. Yes, sir. Go ahead. How's the uh, flight deck squad and the hangar deck squad going? Roger, we're complete on the hangar deck, sir, and we'll be through with the flight deck in just a few minutes. Uh, Roger. The weapons coordinator relays all strike requirements over the 30 MC intercom to the special weapons division officer. For an A4 to hangar deck forward. Uh, Roger, understand, execute operation high wire. Line 1, 43 for A4 to hangar deck forward. All strike orders are immediately authenticated in writing. The W Division officer has a chart listing all the weapons and all the pertinent information relating to each. He has just received in writing his strike orders. He immediately relays a strike requirement to his weapons assembly officers in the M and MA shops where the weapons are stowed. Keep me advised of movement. M shop I, I understand line one forty three for an A four. Out. The instant the strike information is received, the crews spring into action. They quickly remove the upper half of the container chuck. The bi-rail hoist with the universal adapter is positioned over the weapon. The weapon is then raised from its stowage position and transferred by the bi-rail bridge crane to a position in front of the lower stage elevator. Two or more weapons may be made ready for delivery at the same time. There are continuous operations here and in the other magazines fore and aft assuring a steady flow of weapons to the aircraft. The weapon is placed on the Arrow 21B skid and firmly secured to preclude any possible slipping while on the trip up to the aircraft. The weapons assembly officer makes the prescribed tests and inserts the appropriate strike data. It is rolled on the lower stage elevator platform and secured. At the transfer passage, the handling crew transfers this Mark 43 to the upper stage elevator. The Marine Guard and members of the firefighting team stand by.
The flow of weapons continues. This is a Mark 57. The crew secures the weapons to the elevator platform. While on the high seas, especially during turbulent weather, extreme care must be taken to keep the weapons under control to prevent sliding or bumping. Line number eight. Meanwhile, the aircraft loading center, located on the hangar deck, not only controls a squadron loading officers and their crews, but keeps a precise check on the movement and position Line of every nine. weapon that is handled aboard this ship. Line number nine. Site number 407. 407. Has been a key down. element in this control is a status board, which shows the location of the aircraft and the weapon. Plus the status of the aircraft, the loading crews assigned, and the loading officers in charge. Load now, sir. Wait. Hang your day control, eh? Huh? Using sound powered telephones, the loading center keeps the strike control center constantly aware of the positions of all weapons and aircraft. Prior to the arrival of a weapon on the hangar deck, the plane is wire checked and ready for loading. On arrival at the hangar deck, the weapon is rolled off the upper stage elevator and rolled onto the Aero 33D bomb truck. The squadron loading officer takes custody of the weapon. It is raised and inspected by the loading officer and the tech monitor. Following inspection, the loading officer instructs his crew to roll the weapon to its assigned aircraft. This Mark 43 will be loaded onto an aircraft in the hangar. With so little room available, it is always a ticklish job to maneuver around the aircraft. The Aero 33D is moved directly under the bomb rack. The Mark 43 is raised and the lifting lugs are engaged with a bomb rack. Weapons are loaded under the supervision of the tech monitor in accordance with appropriate checkoff lists. Weapon loading equipment is not removed until completion of the aircraft checkout. The assigned pilot observes all steps taken to load the Mark 43 on his plane. The pilot and tech monitor make the final weapon data check and the plane and weapon are put under security surveillance until time for launching. A Mark 57 is being rolled to the deck edge elevator where it will be raised for flight deck loading.
Here hangar deck loaded aircraft are being delivered to the flight deck for launching. Should the ship expend its weapons prior to completion of its mission, the ship will be resupplied from an AE or an AOE through replenishment at sea. Replenishment at sea is accomplished here by a double burtoning rig. Once the weapons are received, handling and strike down procedures are the same as when received from a barge. Every man on this carrier is entrusted with an enormous responsibility. Those who handle weapons like the Mark 43 and Mark 57 share this responsibility. These men have fulfilled an important part of that responsibility.